Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel and happy, happy 2021. Listen, I have been dying to get back onto YouTube, but you know what? Uh, Brendan and I felt really strongly that God was telling us to rest, to hush, and to seek. And I just think one word Brendan gave us in the beginning of the, the year was that the word restraint. It's very, very important, especially when you have a busy life, when there's a lot going on, when you're really in full usage of your gifts, your talents, your businesses, etc. It's so important to practice restraint. So that's exactly what we did. We took some time off social media. We took time, we even stopped watching TV and consuming news. It was just us and God, family, laughter, love. The only people's calls we answered was literally our parents. So guys, before I get into what this video is really is about, I just want to let you know what the plan and the vision for our YouTube um, channel is this year. Um, this is also based on Q&As and your interactions with my previous videos. So I will be doing more sit downs, more Bible study, more basically wisdom and wellness talks. We will be incorporating our podcast and then we'll have a little fun with Brendan. I know you guys enjoy having him on the channel because he really does bring a little bit of lightness um, into the channel. And and yeah, we'll see where it goes, but I'm really, really excited. And with that being said, let us get into today's video. My first video of the year um, is a word, I think we, we put it out when we went off offline on the 31st of 2020 and we put it on all our platforms, return to God. We felt like that's what God was saying in 2021. And I think I posted on my Instagram saying we get so disappointed with the new year because we just grab without whatever word people throw out there. But it's so important to seek and find out, God, what are you expecting from me this year? He may not answer immediately, but it's so important that we are really open to what God really wants. And I feel like he's been really emphasizing and pressing on the fact that we need to return to him. So let us get into today's study. I will be reading um, from the book of of Luke chapter 15 about the prodigal son. Jesus was basically sitting with his disciples and he was telling them about um, the prodigal son. A man had two sons and he had a whole lot of stuff and the one younger son said, dad, listen, I want my inheritance. I want to go out of here. And the dad gave the child his inheritance and he left and the older son stayed back. And then after life through it's bricks at him, he came back to the father and the father embraced him really, really well. It's quite a lengthy um, chapter, so I'm not gonna get into all of it, but I will keep going back to it. Please, if you have the time, go and study the whole scripture so that you can get proper, proper context. And then I've got five points that I want to share with you based on the scripture. So that's the concept of um, the parable. But like I said, please go study it. It's really amazing. First point, God knows what you need. Luke chapter 15 verse 12. And I'm reading from the amplified version of the everyday Bible. And it says, the younger of them inappropriately said to his father, father, give me the share of the property that falls to me. So he divided the estate between them. And with that said, there's times when we ask God for certain things and I'm going to base it on material things because that's always the easiest um, example. God, give me a house. God, give me a car. God, why can't I get that, ha that, that job? God, why can't this happen? Why and then we start reasoning with God and you can hear here, it's stated in the Amplified Version that he inappropriately asked his father. And I think the Bible emphasizes the word inappropriately because he didn't know exactly what he was asking for. He was probably 17 or 18 or 21 and he's asking for his inheritance already. We all know that an inheritance is only gotten after a certain age or when your father dies or etc but he wanted it immediately, which means he was not mature enough to understand what is it that he needs. At the moment, he needed to be under his father's care so that his father could teach him how to tend for, how to care for his flocks and all his treasures and everything that the father has so that the inheritance can be long lasting. Sometimes we come to a place where we ask God for things and he doesn't give it to us because we're not ready. But sometimes he gives it to us because he wants us to go through the process so we can come back and realize, God, you know exactly what I need. And I was not ready for that. So in other words, sometimes 
we are humbled by life so that we can return to God because we retaliate when he doesn't give us what he wants. We retaliate. So sometimes like this father did, he said, you know what? I know the son of mine. I raised him in the right way. Let me give this to him. I know that he will return. Don't be discouraged when you don't get what you need. Don't be discouraged that 2020 didn't turn out the way you expected it to be. Don't be discouraged that this year didn't start out the way it was expected. God knows exactly what you need. Number two, you're not ready. And this is verse 13. A few days later, the younger son gathered together everything that he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he wasted his fortune in reckless and immoral living. And this goes back to a video I did about unanswered prayers, that a gift given too soon is a weapon and not a tool. An inheritance is a good thing. The word of God says a, a, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. An inheritance is a good thing. It's a blessing. But given too soon, he squandered it because he didn't know how to take care of it. He was not mature enough. He was not ready. His father had not taught him yet how to handle this blessing. Now let's bring it back to our life. Life. May, there's a reason why God pulls certain things. I mean, we think there's things we prayed for um, in our family in the year 2020, and they didn't happen. And when the year turned out the way it did, now in, in hindsight, we're like, God, you saved us. We continue to be in a place where we say, God, you saved us. Had we gotten that, it would have destroyed us. How would we have sustained it? We would have squandered it. We would have wasted it. We wouldn't have been able to keep it. And what's the point of a blessing if you can't sustain it? There's a, something I always see on Twitter, which I admire, where people say, if you pay, pray for a job, um, pray for the right environment as well. So it's easy to say, God, give me that promotion please it's gonna change my life God give me that and God knows that you cannot be sustained in that environment you'll fall flat on your face or you're not ready for marriage you are going to drive that husband or that wife away God is still working on your heart so that blessing given too soon you will waste it you will squander it and it will put you in a worse of situation than you could have been in number three the world can't satisfy you verse 16 and it says, he would have gladly eaten the carob pods that the pigs were eating, but they could not satisfy his hunger. And no one was giving him anything. To, no one was giving anything to him. After the son had squandered everything, he ended up staying with pigs and eating the pigs' food. Imagine he left his father's house where his father had servants and all types of food and he left his father's house because he thought the grass was greener on the other side. How many times do we do that where we think, you know what, if I could just have this, if I could just do this, if I could just... If things could just turn out this way, it would be so much better. I'm thinking, I mean, we shouldn't, what I like to do with Bible study is that don't take it too far from outside of us. We can, in, in, in this situation, we can all be the father, we can be the firstborn, and we can be the lastborn. Now put yourself in the shoes of the son who now left his father's house. Now you've left the place of God. You've left the teachings of your parents. And now you're out there in the world. Now we are busy. We are caught up in sex. We are caught up in drugs. We are caught up in alcohol. We caught up in in likes on social media so that we can satisfy that thing which only God can satisfy when we were younger when we was when we were in our father's house when we were in in God's grace we were filled we had identity and then you take off asking God to give you something God gives you those millions you out there and you've just forsaken God. And then there's an emptiness where we constantly feel the need to fill a void. God put a void inside of us, eternity inside of us that only he can fill. He was now eating pig's food because obviously he was embarrassed to go back home because he had squandered everything. He was feeling ashamed. As most of us do when we've run away from God, we're scared to say, God, please, I'm sorry. I've, I've turned my back on you. Instead, whenever we feel those feelings of hurt and regret, we go back into things. Pornography won't satisfy us. In the moment, it feels like, you know what? I'm just getting my high. I'll be good. Alcohol, even food, little things. We all, all of us have our, our high, our comfort. Potato chips, even. We all have our comfort, but it's, 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 it's like what the word says. The pig's food couldn't satisfy him because that's not what his soul needed. 
Number four, we get to the title of my message, the good news of this message, return to God. But when he finally came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I am dy dying here of hunger? Number verse 18, I will get up and go to my father and I'll say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Just treat me like one of your hired men. And I love this. I love his approach because it's an approach of humility. He was willing to be the lowest in his father's house because as the word says, it is better to be a doorkeeper in, at, at, in heaven than honestly the king anywhere else i would rather be the doorkeeper in my father's house than a king outside of his guardians so this is the important thing about returning to god which is what we are doing as a family what i'm inviting you to do is to return to god Returning to God does not necessarily mean going to a physical building or church. It doesn't mean praying more than you are praying. It's, it's not the religious acts that we've, we've, we've gotten so good at. But it's our heart. It's the posture of our heart. Are we open to receiving the love of Jesus? Have we confessed that Jesus... Your blood is what saves us. You died on the cross so that we could be free. Have we accessed that freedom or have we just gotten used to just saying that phrase, I'm free, we are liberated. Let us go back to the cross. Let us go back to the blood. Let us return to God where there is grace and where there is favor. Yes, it will take you saying no to those temporary pleasures. We need to say no to those things that have been taking the place of God. I think 2020 showed us that God wanted us to be still. Sit down, be calm, hear God, what are you saying? Avail yourself. And I know, I think I should emphasize that returning to God, we won't always get the hip it's not a feeling but it's a posture it's a condition of the heart having the fruit of the spirit walking in love walking in kindness having self-control being loved to others spreading the gospel in a loving and a compassionate way we have to return to God we don't know what's happening in these uncertain times but one thing that is certain is that the kingdom of God lasts forever that his grace is forever and if every single day we wake up and we say God you've given me today's bread you've given me today's grace you've given me food for today you've given me love for today we'll be okay we don't have to worry about tomorrow I don't know what's happening tomorrow you don't know what's happening tomorrow the news has a lot to say but when you return to God we are so safe and just like the son he was willing to be the lost he humbled himself and that's the first thing we need to do humble ourselves and say God we have sinned we have gone our own ways we've squandered what you've given us we've wasted the talents you've blessed us with but here we are again we say god we give them back to you we give our lives back to you our businesses our work everything you've entrusted us with we give it back to you and we say god come into our hearts and number five there's a celebration let me go to verse 20. Remember the guy when he came back, he said, you know what? I will just be with my father's servants, etc. But this is what the father does. This is what God does for us. He got up and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was moved with compassion for him and ran and embraced him and kissed him. Um, that scripture, actually reading it makes me want to cry because I remember a place in my life and this is when I decided to write the word grace on my wrist because I remember a place where I was in such, literally in the pits of hell, literally in a hell that I put myself into and I remember God lovingly, compassionately taking me out and saying, my daughter, you are welcome back in my arms. I want you. I want to use you. I want you for me. Yes, you've done it all. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter now. You are mine. That's what God's saying. It doesn't matter what we've gotten ourselves into. Listen, even if we've dug ourselves in the literal pits of hell and sacrificed ourselves, if we just confess the name of Jesus and say, God, come into my heart, he will free us. And like this father, instead of saying, hey, you squandered that money. I told you you weren't ready. He compassionately ran to him. He ran to him. Your father runs to you. He leaves the 99 and goes after the one. He recklessly loves you. He recklessly loves us. He's here for us. He wants us. We were born 
for him. He created us for him. So it doesn't really matter. I, I, I honestly feel such a pressing to emphasize that it doesn't matter what situation we've gotten ourselves into. He will run compassionately to you. The father said to him, son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But it was fitting to celebrate and rejoice for this brother of yours was as good as dead and has began to live. He was lost and has been found. The father threw a party. He took out the fattest calf. Honestly, the fireworks, he put on a robe, a special robe on him. And there was a celebration in heaven because he returned to his father. Now, I want to press on a very important part. The older brother who remained behind said in verse 28, but the elder brother became angry and deeply resentful and was not willing to go in. And his father came out and began pleading with him. This speaks to the religious, us who feel like we are better with pride, where other people, we're watching people falling and we're just judging. You shouldn't be doing that. The Bible says don't do that. You can't come into the kingdom of God because you do that. We know your history. Who are you to say that? Don't be perfect, Patty. Don't play the don't play the judge just because you feel like you've been well positioned in God. We don't know what righteousness is to God. All we depend on is the grace for a day. So Christians, I am pleading, let us not be the people who turn people who turn people away from God. Let us not be that big brother who instead of celebrating that his brother is back, instead is angry that there's a party for him. No, let us celebrate that people of God are coming back to God. Let us welcome them. Let us celebrate with them. Let us help one another. But most importantly, like I said, when he returns, to his father his father through a celebration and that's what I just want to start the year off by saying is God is inviting you the father is inviting you to come and walk with him to return to him and everything it doesn't matter what's happened he will wipe he's wiped it away as soon as you confess he's wiped it away but like the brother did like the young boy did he humbled himself he returned to his father and he said even if I'm at the lowest it's better than outside there and you know what the best part is that God has better for you and that is how we kickstart the year it's been so comforting to me reading the word knowing that God wants me right and right in his bosom is really really encouraging so I hope this word has been encouraging to you I hope we will all really return to God this year and let's grow together let's let's live every day like it's the last let us be present let us live with passion let us live with purpose but let us live in grace and in the love of Christ I love you lots God bless you and I'll see you soon.